it's possible to become a good software designer. I know it may not seem like it at first, uh, but it is possible. Thing is, we live in a world that sets bad expectations for us. We live in a world of five minute abs that just say, just have a little bit of investment and you're gonna get this huge payoff. In fact, there's even a YouTube channel called Minute Physics, but we all know that you sort of have to study physics first before Minute Physics makes any sense. So the big message here is that mastery takes time and mastering contractual design, like we've been chatting about, is a great investment. You're gonna benefit from that and become a better software developer. In fact, it's the best way that I know for you to grow and become good at software development. Today, you might feel like you're awkward and slow with contracts, but that's pretty similar to every other thing that you try at first. Uh, you're a novice, so it may just seem easier to write code than it is to do the contracts. However, think about this. Everything that you are good at has invent involved practice. So for example, if I ask you some simple math questions like what's six times eight, boom, comes to you instantly. Um, or even things that are more subtle and, and, and took time for you to develop this intuition, which grows faster, x or x squared. These are the kinds of things that investment will give you, that you become very fast at things that previously were very slow. So let's talk about Thinking Fast and Slow. This is a fantastic book. Uh, this author is basically the world expert on, he's a, a psychologist, uh, he's a world expert on how we think. He's got a long career, and this book is sort of his capstone that summarizes how uh, he thinks the brain works. What he's noticed is that you can think of there being two systems that are running at the same time in all of our heads. System one has very quick responses, the kind you might need to ride a surfboard. For example, you can't think about what your next move is on the surfboard, you're, like, you're doing it uh, in, in milliseconds. Or think about another one, which is if you glance with your eyes, you can see which object is farther away than another one, okay? But if you were to actually try to write a computer vision program to do that analysis, you'll find out that there's an enormous amount of, of computation that must happen to get that to, to, to work. So it's kind of amazing we've got this fast system in our head. And he contrasts that with system two, which is the slow system. And you can sort of catch yourself doing this. If I ask you to do something mechanical, like counting the number of A's in a word, like abracadabra, or uh, if you're driving on a nice straight road, you can let system one take over that's nice and fast. You're barely uh, engaged in that activity. But if you have to do something demanding, like park into a tight parking space, you will find yourself thinking very deliberately about every step uh, that you're gonna do. It turns out that practice makes some things faster. You can take things that were previously part of your system too that's slow and you can sort of ploddingly think through it and you can shift those over and make them part of your system one, which is fast. Uh, there's been a lot of interesting work done with chess masters and basically if you're sufficiently good at chess, let's say somebody who's playing me who's not any good at chess, they can glance at a board and within a few seconds, they can make an excellent move, okay? So they're able to take things that are slow and plotting for me and through their investment and practice, they can move into that. What you can do is you can do the same thing for designing software. You can invest in contracts and that's gonna help you become faster. Alan Kay won a Turing Award for his work on Smalltalk while he was at uh, Xerox Park. He has this great, every, everything that he writes is worth reading, honestly, uh, but you should go take a look at this uh, answer that he put up on Quora. And he talks about the process by which somebody becomes good at something, okay? And he says the first that uh, people that are pretty good at calculus today can outthink mathematically uh, a lot of the geniuses from history. And the reason is not because we're all geniuses the, today, but that we have trained our brains in a certain way through calculus to be able to do this amazing thing. That would be great if we could do that for software too. He says the challenge is making sure that your brain's cognitive load is reduced. And the way that you can do that is through practice. He uses uh, an analogy here with mathematics. And so mathematics is generally uh, compacted and compacted and compacted, both in terms of its notation and terms of its, in terms of its abstractions. These things are completely not uh, accessible to someone who is a novice and who comes in and tries to look at advanced mathematics. But uh, after a while, these things become more natural. It sort of is the training for your brain so your brain can actually work on those abstractions and do more and more. Uh, it's moving things into system one. 
If you think about the uh, time it has taken for you to become good at math, you weren't really in charge of that. At some point, your, your parents, your teachers sat you down and said, you're going to study math. And similarly, you're going to study and learn how to write an essay and all the other things that you have become good at. Software development is the first thing, perhaps, that you took on yourself, right? And you are making a choice about whether you're going to become good at it. And so uh, it's a little different than the rest of them. Uh, no one's forcing you to become good. Uh, so uh, please, uh, please take your time and do it wisely. Christopher Alexander uh, is a very influential guy. He was trained as a mathematician and then he switched careers over to become an architect, the kind who build buildings. And he noticed that a bunch of his friends, uh, other architects, uh, were attempting to replicate the styles, for example, of French villages or Italian villages. And they might superficially get some of the things right, but it didn't feel like an Italian village, didn't feel like a French village. And so he wondered, what was it that the builders were doing that allowed them to make those things? Because those builders just did it, right? Uh, it wasn't the case that Italian builders could replicate any style, but they sure knew how to build Italian villages. Uh, there's a great website. It's called the C2 Wiki. In fact, it's the original wiki. It was uh, built by Ward Cunningham, who also brought us the term technical debt and also was instrumental in bringing us the agile uh, software development practices and extreme programming. But uh, he and a bunch of his friends uh, were chatting about software development on the C2 Wiki, and they found this Christopher Alexander uh, materials, and they found that a lot of the ideas that Christopher Alexander was talking about, about designing buildings, could be applied to designing software. So here's a quote from uh, the C2 Wiki on the gate. So the idea of the gate is that um, if you were not naturally already a French builder, you hadn't grown up in that tradition, there may be a way for you to become just as good as those people, to be able to what he called uh, engage in the timeless way of building. You, you have to reach that level of mastery, and to do so, you use a gate, okay? So what Alexander uh, did was he created a pattern language. That is, here's all the different ways that a master French builder would put together a village, okay, from here's how we place windows and here's how we do balconies and the streets and, and the doors and everything else. He did the same thing for Italian villages, and he said that you can use, an architect could use, those pattern languages with practice as the gate that gets them to this level of mastery that they're looking for. Let me tell you a funny story about myself and, and home TV shows, uh, which is that years ago I renovated a house and I wasn't any good at doing the plastering. I mean, I thought I was, I'd read some books, I watched some little videos on how to do this stuff and I, I did the things that they were doing there, which is to put the plaster on the trowel and I would try to fix some crack in the wall. And I found that no matter how many times I like, I uh, tried to put this plaster on there, it sort of came out like that bottom picture where you've got all these streak lines and it wasn't even and you know, little bits of sand would even get in there and make a scratch and so forth. Well, it was terrible. So eventually we hired a pro and I tell you, his first slap of this plaster on the wall was better than me having, you know, painstakingly scraped it 10 times. And I feel like there was really a, a parallel here between the level of mastery that we're talking about is that I had read some books. I would sort of hope that it was going to be like this nugget that I would learn. I'd read the book, see the video, and then boom, I'm going to be working like a master. But it didn't work like that at all. This other guy, he was great. He was fast. He had switched things uh, from system two, which is slow, into system one, which is fast, okay? And so imagine my surprise when I watch uh, Bob Vila, who is the former host of This Old House for a long time. And he had this video where he was uh, chatting with some plastering guys, and you can see that picture of them there. They're actually up on stilts just to make it more difficult while they're doing the plaster. And uh, I can't find this video part online, uh, but at the end of this video, uh, Bob picks up the trowel and he does just like me. He tries to put the, the plaster on there and tries to do a pass, and sure enough, it looks terrible. So the lesson I take away from this is, you know, it takes time to move things from the slow system two to system one. Bob was right next to the construction industry his whole life. He could speak eloquently about the ways you need to do the things because he had been chatting with these people. He knew it intellectually, but everything that he knew was still in system two, okay? He needed to move things into system one, just like we're trying to do. So the point is you can't learn math by hanging out with math people or having them as your, your roommate. You actually need to do the practice yourself. No matter if you can use those words, 
you need to get to the point where when you put your fingers on the keyboard and go to design a program, you actually have the mastery of how to do uh, contracts and how to do software development. So why am I here talking to you about contracts and why have I uh, been so excited about this? It turns out contracts were my gate. In the 1990s, I worked on a software development uh, system called Catalysis. Uh, these books are about five bucks on Amazon and the uh, PDF is actually available online right now. Highly recommend this as well. Uh, what Catalysis was, was a way of melding two different disciplines, the OO design discipline with uh, lightweight formal methods in the form of contracts. And that was my violin practice. Uh, day after day, I was working with this, trying to help others learn catalysis, but I was also growing myself. I thought I was pretty good at OO design. I thought I could put together some code okay, but man, I tell you, at the, this journey was uh, a very painstaking one for me. I did a lot of things very poorly. I saw some of the guys around me who were much better, just seemed to just, it just came out of them. And I, I, I wanted to do that myself. So this was my journey through the gate. The gate was contracts. And I don't know a faster way to get to mastery. I'm sure there are other ones. Other people, I'm sure, have different uh, pathways to get there. But the point is you need to look for your gate. And I would suggest that contracts can be the gate. Uh, they are great at creating the conditions for deliberate practice, which may be something you want to look up. Um, when I reflect on my life and how I was able to grow, I can point specifically to contracts as being the center of doing that. So that's why I, I suggest other people but that, that you might want to try this as well. So in summary, the world is not very nice to us. Uh, right now, you can watch any number of movies or advertisements that are basically suggesting you can become really good at something or you can uh, get this great uh, thing from a very small investment. Or maybe it was always in you all along like the, like the protagonist in the movie. That's generally not how that works, okay? Don't expect you're gonna find, you're gonna read a book and you're gonna get one nugget and then ta-da, now you're gonna be a great software uh, designer. Instead, think about it more like this. There have been giants in the world. You can stand on their shoulders, but you have to invest the time to get up to that level. You have to climb up there first. The contracts can be your gate. It's that way that you can deliberately practice your craft and you will get there. The practice will make you fast. The things that you can sort of reason through right now, and you can read it in the book, you can read about contracts, you can sort of apply that mechanically, you're still in system two. What you need is the practice to get you to system one, but you have to set your expectations right. You need to expect that uh, just like kids practicing the violin, there's gonna be some screeching noises coming from your code. But don't worry, just invest the time and it's gonna be okay. Good luck.